Today I want to explain why we are focusing on protecting this system and why high hospitalization numbers affect all of us. Thanks to the hard work and sacrifices of so many Albertans, we have seen hospitalizations decline significantly over the past few weeks. From the peak of 943 people in hospital on December 30th, we have declined to 604 today. From a high of 155 ICU admissions, we are now down to 110. This is encouraging news and a signal that we are making meaningful progress. Every one of us should take pride in this. However, it also means that there are just as many people in hospital today as there were on December 4th, when our acute care system was struggling under the impact of COVID-19. While hospitalizations are declining, the health system is still feeling this strain today, which impacts anyone who needs care, regardless of whether it is because of COVID or any other reason. For example, let's consider someone who has a heart attack or someone who falls and breaks their wrist. Both of these require hospital care and have nothing to do with COVID-19. In both cases, the large number of COVID beds that are currently occupied with patients and the precautions that must be taken to prevent the spread of the virus in hospital mean there are fewer beds available when patients arrive. When we have a high number of COVID-19 patients requiring care, this means that hospital units fill up faster and there are fewer spaces available for those who suffer strokes, heart attacks, or other ailments. If we're not careful, people who need to be admitted to hospital can then spend longer in the emergency department while waiting for a bed. This in turn can lead emergency departments to fill up faster, challenging their ability to take new arrivals, leaving Albertans with broken bones and other less severe needs in waiting rooms. Everyone should know that if they are in need of urgent care, that care is available. To keep it that way, it is essential that we keep the restrictions in place for a little while longer so we can ensure care is readily available for all Albertans across the province, whatever their health needs are. I know these measures are profoundly impacting many people, and I understand the desire of some to move forward now and hope that things turn out okay. We are monitoring the situation in the province and hope to update Albertans soon on when some of the current restrictions may be safely eased. Until then, it is essential that we all continue to follow the measures in place. This is how we protect our health system and each other. We are working on a framework that would help do exactly that, to help people be able to see what that target is that we need to collectively achieve in, in order to be able to open more activities. It's important to remember, and, and I know that it's, it's easy to forget because there still are many things that are restricted, but it is important to remember that over the last several weeks, we have reopened several activities. On January 11th, uh, schools across the province went back in person. And just 10 days ago, we did uh, open up that option for in-person outdoor social gatherings up to 10, as well as all personal and wellness services. I know that for those whose businesses or activities that they enjoy are still currently restricted, uh, that may not uh, come as a lot of comfort, but it is important to remember that whenever we start to open up and open these activities, we do need to watch to see what, if any, impact that has on our community spread before we open up that next set of activities. And as I said, we are working on that framework to hopefully help people see those signposts and see um, how we are hoping to move forward as long as we're able to continue uh, minimizing transmission as we've been successful at over the past several weeks.